Greta Garbo, but it isn't. Anyway, it's a nice, clean picture. It didn't make much difference then what happened on the screen, just so long as something happened. Ask him, Dad, if he remembers the Midway at the Chicago World's Fair in 93. Here's the girl who made it famous with her spangles and her smile. You would hardly call this collegiate, but it was a lot of fun for those who danced and those who watched. chance to show off the new bonnet and dress, and there was plenty of both on these grand dames of yesterday. High society strolled the avenue to see and be seen, and here was set the fashion for the coming spring. The gentlemen present were not important. satins and plumes, and from all appearances, the fad of dieting was unknown. Dusters and goggles for self-defense. Lots of noise and plenty of dust. You wouldn't quite call this a streamlined model, but in its day it was quite some pumpkin, and sometimes it worked. Toys of the rich. Ordinary folks just stood on the curb and watched the cars go by, and an automobile parade was a big event. Orville Wright took his plane to France to demonstrate America's progress in the air. The Frenchman had been building planes, too, and he wanted to show them what he could do if they would only look. There was much ceremony, maybe too much. More action in the grandstand than in the field. But preparations are completed. The engine started, the plane taxis, and Wright finally gets into the air, while the officials keep on telling each other how glad they are to be there. Fields, the call boy summons, and a great star of the handsome cab days, bedecked in plumes and jewels, leaves her dressing room to face a worshipping audience. Now hushed in everlasting sleep, but those who heard him will never forget. Nowhere in concert or opera is there such a voice today. fighter and buffalo hunter who, with his great show, made the old Wild West known around the world, back from a tour to welcome old friends at home. A canny little Scot who was an industrial giant. He built a great industry and made many millionaires. Did he give your town a library? Three times a candidate, but never a president. Advocate of grape juice and 16 to 1. In the Senate for years, and an advisor of many presidents of the United States. The boardwalk at Atlantic City was as popular then as it is today, and the cheer boys working just as hard. Maybe you can remember when the movies flickered like this, but the sea breezes blew just the same. Well, he thinks that they're nice enough to snapshot. They may have been bathing beauties then, but where would they be today? Sex appeal of a dizzy decade, she wants you to take a plunge with her. is always busy when a new president is made. It was coaches and teams then, 
Automobiles hadn't yet been given the official recognition. Prosperity was the issue then, too. McKinley served his country well and died a martyr, the third president to be assassinated. Wakes and flames shake and burn. Disaster stalks the streets. Hundreds are killed, thousands made homeless. One of the world's greatest disasters, a city torn and burned by nature's most ugly attack over which man has no control. But phoenix-like from this seeming hopeless mass of twisted steel and piles of stone, from these broken streets and tottering ruins, there rose a greater city to become a monument to the courage and faith of the undaunted Americans of the West. Wherever Teddy went, things happened. He was always the center of attention, respected by all, worshipped by many. and won his audiences from coast to coast. When he spoke, the entire world listened. He did sing, but he knew what he was doing. One of America's few great presidents. Wilhelm II, Kaiser of the German Empire, here with his Prussian warlords at Potsdam, on his way to army maneuvers to review his troops. In those days in Germany, it was always marching soldiers. Nicholas II and the Tsarina, always surrounded by a large retinue of admiring followers and scheming diplomats. Their lovely daughters and the noble Grand Dukes. Imperialism at its height, zenith of power and tyranny. A pathetic, simple figure, the little father of all the Russians, in the shadow of a tragic end. A beloved old man, he ruled Austria-Hungary from 1848 to 1916, but fate was kind, for he did not see the awful end. naval ships, but ships of commerce, too. Victims of the dastardly submarine. Human life had little value here. The great hull, mortally wounded, turns and sinks, and carries with it hundreds of struggling men, while others, more fortunate, swim about in the open sea with hope of rescue. Some men live today who were lucky enough to survive, with horrible memories of their comrades gone in one of the many great marine disasters of the World War. A victory, is it? Who wins? <laughs>